the uh, the reference to the chat that the user is clicking on that we are passing in through this action right over here. We're passing in the reference to this given chat document. So jumping back into our chat page, up here it would be it would make sense to want to display the name of the person with whom we're chatting with. But we're actually going to run into the same issue or a similar issue that we ran into multiple times before, in that what we're getting here is the reference to the chat document as opposed to the user document of the person with who we're chatting with. So first things first, on the actual chat page, we're going to be doing a document from reference query um, to get access to the actual chat document as opposed to just the reference, which is what we have right now. So. I'm going to open this back up on the chat page. We're going to go over here, add query. We're doing a document from reference query. The collection is chats. And the source is our receive chat parameter over here. Hit confirm. So now we have access to the chat document itself with all its information. Now, again, going back to our title over here, we want this to display the name of the person with whom we're chatting with. But we're going to have to write a custom function to do this because we're going to need to find the actual name, the display name of the other user as opposed to just their reference. We already have a function for getting the other user's reference, but now we need the other user's name. So over here on the text, we're going to go to set its value and we're going to go down to custom functions. We see our other custom functions. We're going to create a new one. And this one is going to be called get other user name just like that now the return value of this function is just going to be a string it's not a list it's not nullable right we're just returning the actual name of the other person involved in this conversation for the arguments we're going to need to pass in the list of names i'm going to call this list of names which is a string it is a list and it's not nullable and then for the second argument we're going to be passing in the name of our authenticated user so that we have something to check against. So I'm going to call this auth user name, just like that. This is a string, it's not a list, and we should be good to go. So over here on the left in our actual code, I'm going to give us a bit more space so that we can see better. And I will zoom in a little bit to make it clearer. And then it's actually going to be pretty much the same code as we wrote in the previous function that we uh, that we defined. I'm going to write it out, and then I will explain every step of the process. So there we go. That's our custom function. And like before, this is called, this is what is called the ternary operator. So we're basically asking a question. If it's true, do one thing. If it's false, do the other thing. So here we're asking if our authenticated user's name is equal to the first name in the list. If it is, then we want to return the other one because we're looking for the name of the other person. If it is not, then we want to return the first name because that will be the name corresponding to the other person involved in this chat. So again, this function is returning and asking the question, is the authenticated username equal to the first name in the list of names? If it is, then we want to return the last name. If it is not, then we want to return the first name because that's the name corresponding to the other person in the chat other than our authenticated user. So that should be good to go. I'm just going to zoom back out really quickly and then we can go ahead and test our function right over here. So let's say we have Justin and we have Ariana. Our authenticated user, let's say is Ariana. So now we should expect to get the output Justin because the other person involved in this conversation in this case, if we are Ariana, if our authenticated user is Ariana would be Justin. So we're going to hit run. And as expected, we get Justin. If I flip it around and I say that our authenticated user is Justin, hit run, we get Ariana. So that looks good to go. We're going to save this function up. And now we have to pass in our arguments. So remember that at this point, we already did the document from reference query on the page itself. So we do have access to the chat document itself. And conveniently, 
in the chat document, there's a field for the list of names of the people involved in this conversation. So for the list of names, we're going to set its value into our chat document from our page query. And we're setting it to the list of names. Hit confirm. And then for our authenticated username, this is easy. We're going to go into authenticated user and pass in the display name. Hit confirm. And now this title over here should be displaying the name of the other person involved in this conversation. Now we do have an error up here. It's probably asking us to check our custom function. So we're going to go do that. And once that's done, I'm going to jump back into our test session and see if everything is working properly. So we're on our homepage, we have our conversation. And now if I click into this, we can see that this conversation is between ourselves and Michael. If we go into the one between ourselves and Ariana, we see that the Ariana name pops up as expected. So this is all looking pretty good. We're just going to jump quickly back into Flutterflow into our chat page over here. And we're just going to quickly put in the building blocks of uh, the actual UI of the chat page. So the first thing we need in our main column will be a list view, which is going to be displaying the, the message bubbles. We're going to throw that in there. We're going to expand it so that it takes up all of the room and we're going to turn shrink wrap off for optimization. Now, in this case, once we're actually getting the chat messages from a backend query, we want them to start from the bottom over here, right? If you think of your experience using any texting app, iMessage, Instagram DM or whatever, the most recent chats are actually at or the most recent messages are at the bottom as opposed to at the top. So in our list view, we're going to go down here and just enable this reverse which you see it changed this little list example thing to the bottom, showing that the beginning is now going to be at the bottom. So the newest thing, since we're going to eventually order them by timestamp, is going to be at the bottom. On top of this, other than our list view, we're going to be needing a row at the bottom, just like so, which is going to be where the user can type in their message. In here, we're going to throw in a text field, just like that, and then an icon button, to the right, just like this. I'm just going to quickly change the styling here. Um, for the hint text, I'll put type your message here, dot, dot, dot. I'll take off the label because I don't think this field needs to be labeled. It's pretty self-explanatory. The text color, I'll make it black. And as always, I like the outline like so, and we're just going to set everything to black to keep things simple. To me, that looks pretty good. And then for this button, this is actually going to be our send button. So I'm going to go in here and change the icon to send. I like this one over here. I'm going to make the icon white. Um, the fill color is going to be our primary color and the border is the same color. So that's okay. I'm going to give it a bit of padding so that it can breathe from the side of the page. And I think that looks pretty good. So that's going to do it for part one of building out our chat page in the next one. We're actually going to be starting to implement the chat bubbles and the way that's going to look. So I will see you guys there.